Hello everyone, my name is Santos and today we will be installing a hitch receiver on a Mini Cooper Countryman. This will fulfill all your needs for any towing accessories such as bike racks or trailers and we will be showing you how it's done today. You will need the tool seen here to complete this installation. Uh, this hitch is a more difficult hitch. We will be cutting uh, the fascia underneath about right here and we will have to remove the whole bumper to be able to put the hitch into position so we'll be taking it kind of slowly and um, make it, making it work. So we'll start over okay. um, here <clears throat> on the driver's side. Alright, starting over on the driver's side, first step to taking off the bumper we'll be removing these two 8mm bolts right here. And then we'll move to the passenger side and repeat the same process. All right. Now that we have those two bolts out, we'll stay over here on the passenger side. And there are four plastic rivets right above where those previous bolts were. We'll be pushing in that little pin and it will allow us to take it right out. And then we will repeat that on the same uh, other side after we take these. So to take these out, we'll be using a Phillips screwdriver just to push in the center tab. And then we'll be using a plastic panel remover to get under and pry it out. All right. So it helps to pull down on the panels a little bit. You can see it kind of come a little loose and we can get that out. And now we'll repeat the same process on the other side. So now we're on the driver's side and a little trick that we learned from the passenger side that helps remove these fasteners is uh, getting the push pins as far up as you can. So we'll be using an Allen wrench uh, just the smallest one that you can get and we can push that up even further that way which helps ease taking these out. So now that we have those pushed all the way we can just kind of pull down and you can see that it comes right out. Now if you push the push pin up too far it'll come out so you'll just have to catch it as it as it comes out. All right, for our next step, we are over by the driver's side. Behind the wheel, underneath, we have a plastic rivet. Um, in the instructions given to us, it tells us to punch out the middle, just like the other ones that we did. But this one is a little different, and uh, we found it a little impossible to do. Um, and since the manufacturer gives us replacement rivets for these and we're not going to be using this anymore, we're just going to go ahead and drill it out um, using a pilot drill bit and then we'll go from there to see where we need to. Okay, now that we have it out of the passenger side, we will move over back to the other side. We're staying over here by the passenger side. We'll be removing or moving out of the way this uh, wheel well lining. And behind it, there will be a fastener for lighting that we will be disconnecting from the bumper. So up here in the corner, right behind where the first plastic rivet that we took out, there's a wire right back here that we will disconnect the fastener. That will give us access to remove the bumper. So now on the driver's side, we will remove this wheel well fabric. And we will take off the fastener in the same location as the passenger side. And you can kind of see it when I pull it out right there. Okay, for our next step, we will be over here on the driver's side on the wheel arc. We'll be 
prying it back just up to where we took out the fasteners uh, to be revealing a couple eight millimeter bolts that we will have to uh, remove. And it's just held on by clips, so you'll just work your way up. And then this exposes the eight millimeter bolt that we will be taking out. So now we'll be removing this eight millimeter. And then we'll repeat the same process on the passenger side. So for our next step, we are underneath the vehicle, right above the muffler. There are two 10 millimeter plastic bolts that hold the um, bumper. And we will be removing these. Uh, the instructions say that you can lower the exhaust. Uh, we're not going to. Uh, there's enough space where we can get in there and uh, take it off ourselves without lowering it, so we're, we're not going to, but if, if you feel like you need some more room, you can go ahead and do that. So now we are on the passenger side, and we'll be removing the other 10 millimeter plastic bolt on the side. There we go. For our next step, we'll be going into the cargo area to remove some bolts at the top of the bumper. So we'll open up the back and we have two eight millimeter bolts, one right here on the driver's side and another here on the passenger side. And we'll just be using the drill. So now that we have those two 10 millimeter bolts out, there's another one right on the other side of that bracket. Uh, it's a little easier to get when we get an extension. So we have a different ratchet in there with a 10 millimeter and we will go ahead and remove that. So now on the driver's side, we will remove this bolt. And then we'll just tug on this a little bit and we'll see that it is loose. Okay, so for our next step, we'll be over here on the driver's side. We're going to now be removing the bumper fascia. And first we will be prying this out. And there's little tabs in here that you'll just have to push down and then to be able to release it. To kind of take a little bit out of the mystery of what we'll be doing. We've already done the passenger side to give you a look. There's these four tabs. You just push that down and it will allow you to release it from the bumper. Now they are a little tight so you're going to need a sturdy tool. We use a flathead so you got to be careful not to scratch the paint or anything like that and it is a little difficult so we'll be taking some some concentration and effort for it. So now we'll go to the driver's side and we'll kind of show you how it's done. So now that we have the bumper loose, we will be prying that open a little bit. There's a couple wires that you can see are still connected. There's two up top here, and there's one down here at the bottom. And there's just a tab on them. This one's underneath. Just push it down and release. And it will be the same with these ones. You can see they're on the top right there. So then there's the two right here and the tabs are right on the top. All right, and we'll set this to the side. Okay. <clears throat> All right, now that we have the bumper down, we will. this is our bumper uh, beam. 
and we will be taking this off because the hitch will be sandwiched in between the vehicle and the bumper beam. Uh, it's just three 15 millimeter bolts, two up top, and there's one underneath. And to help get that other one, we'll be using a five inch and in extension for it. So we'll go ahead and take this off. Now that we have those bolts removed, this will come right off. And we'll just set this to the side. All right, now that we have the bumper beam out of the way, we'll be putting the hitch into position. We'll be using our hitch jack to line it up. And as you can see, the holes, the three line up just with the existing bolts. Now that we have the hitch up, we'll be sandwiching it in between the bumper beam. Okay. And then we'll be taking this and just putting it right on top. And then we will just loosely start these to keep it in place. And then we'll do the same on the driver's side. and then we will tighten it down. Now we're going to go ahead and use the same 15 millimeter socket and five inch extension and we will be torquing it to 38 foot pounds. And onto the passenger side. So before we put the bumper on, uh, to allow the bumper to fit over the hitch, we will need to trim the bumper itself. Uh, they want us to go directly in the center and make a three inch by five inch uh, cut so the hitch will be able to rest right inside of that cut on the bumper. So we have determined that right here where this hole is, is directly in the center of the bumper. So we just went inch and a half by inch and a half and we already made our guide and we are going to go ahead and cut that. All right, now that we have that 
hole cut, we're going to bring the bumper into position. Now, when we kind of get it in its area, we're going to reattach the wires that we unplugged before. So we're going to start with the one down here. All right, now we've got the bumper here uh, resting on the hitch. And with that in place, we're going to reinsert the connections for the wiring. And now with those in place, we'll go and put that back on. Once we have those tabs in, we'll head down to the bottom and make one more connection. Okay. So now there's one more wiring harness that will be connected to this box right here, just on the other end. So you'll grab the loose wire just till it plugs in like that. And while we're down here, we're going to reattach these brackets. You'll want to line up the hole just so it slides right over. There we go. And then we'll repeat on the other side to get it into position. So we'll take those 10 millimeter nuts that we replaced or removed before. And we're just going to We're just going to lightly get that on. We'll use a longer extension for the one next to it. Right. And then we'll repeat it on the other side. So now we'll repeat the same process on the passenger side. All right. All right, now that we're done with the bottom, we're gonna come up here towards the top of the bumper and we're going to put the eight millimeter back in. And we'll repeat the same on the passenger side. There we go. So over here on the driver's side wheel arc, we're going to make sure our wiring is through this hole before we connect that. We're just going to put our eight millimeter bolt back into the side here. Now with that in place, we'll go ahead and plug this in. and push these back into its tabs. And we'll repeat it on the other side. All right, now we're gonna put our plastic fasteners back into the four slots right here. But before we do that, we'll be pushing the fabric back behind. And we're gonna put them in without the pins first. And once those are in, we'll lock them into place.
with the pin. And we'll repeat the pro same process on this side. And while we're on the passenger side, we're going to go ahead and put the eight millimeter bolts that we removed right there. Okay, so our last step, we will be replacing the two plastic rivets that we drilled out earlier. So we'll come down here underneath the bumper near the tire, and we will take the plastic rivet and just put it into place all the way through. And then we will be using this plastic rivet tool to install that. And it'll just take a couple squeezes. Just like that. And we'll repeat it on the other side. So now that we have the hitch on, we'll go over a few specs about the hitch. From the ground to the bottom of the hitch, it is about nine inches. And from the ground to the top of the hitch, it is about 10 and a half inches. That way you have a good estimate for the ground clearance for any ball mount uh, that you're looking to get. And from the pin and hook hole to the edge of the bumper is about four inches. So if you're putting in a bike rack or any type of vertical post, you know how deep you'll need it for, for that. But um, now that we've gone over that, thank you for watching our video. Be safe, enjoy your trailer hitch, and happy trailering. To learn more about the product seen in this video, or to schedule an installation by U-Haul Hitch Professional, visit us online today at uhaulhitches.com.